You're welcome back. It's still Punchline. Don't forget to like and subscribe to all our social media handles, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Go ahead and follow us to get latest updates on all our shows. And that will be if you enable notifications on any of these platforms at First News Nation. All right, let's move into the second part. INEC has said, don't be afraid that the elections will not be postponed. Recently, there's been talk all over the internet, talk all over the media space that there's a possibility that the elections on 2023 might be postponed. Other people had also said, INEC is probably gearing up for a runoff, mm -hmm. whichever case. But what INEC has come out to say is there's no plan for the postponement of the elections. And come February 25th, and uh, March 11, 2023, the presidency, National Assembly elections will take place and the governorship and State House of Assembly will take place respectively. The repeated assurance by the security agencies for the adequate protection of personnel, materials and processes also reinforces our determination to proceed. The 2023 general election will hold as scheduled. They have come out to say that uh, uh, this one is interesting, that they have distributed uh, sensitive materials to 17 states in all six geopolitical zones. Now, my own question is this. You remember when the CBN governor attempted to vie for the presidency and uh, everybody talked about it? Immediately after that, we had INE come out with a statement saying that they will no longer be keeping sensitive materials at the Central Bank of Nigeria, which is the most secure place to put anything uh, uh, worth value. But now the 17 states that have received the sensitive materials, as well as the BVAS, where would they be stored in a country where INEC offices are burnt as a hobby? My question is, where are you placing these sensitive materials, INEC? INEC says, however, that they are depending a lot on security agencies and we give them a wonderful round of applause for that because i don't know when um, everyone is now depending on the security agencies that seem to be overwhelmed by the situation in the country right now one uh, 13.8 million pvcs have been printed 9.5 million uh, new voters have been added to the already existing 84 million uh, in the voters register so it makes it about 93.5 million voters who are expected to be voting come 2023 elections in February and March. The statistics released include that 52% of the voters are male. Meanwhile, 47% are female. 39% of that group of people are youths between the ages of 18 to 34. 35% are middle aged between 35 and 49. 18% are the elderly between 50 to 69. That reminds me of a video of a lady I saw, a market woman, who was talking about this person will fix the country, but it's this person's turn. Let's not talk about that. We'll play that in the break. 5% are senior citizens are over 70 years and above. So 35% of those who are expected to vote in the 2023 elections in February and March are supposed to be young people between the ages of... 18 and 34. Now, out of this entire number, if we talk about occupation, students form the highest number of possible voters in the forthcoming elections. They carry about 27%. Farmers and fishermen and other trades carry about 15%. Housewives will take 13.9%. This shows where political parties will be focusing their attention on students and, uh, and they're like, you know, 52% are male, 47% are female. Those are the statistics you're looking at on your screens. Let's see how parties are able to translate this into the voting population. Meanwhile, people are picking up their PVCs, and we encourage you, if you have not gotten your PVC, please go and get your PVC. It's very, very important. Let's go for another short break. We'll be right back. It's still Punchline. I am Sami Adjufo. And let's take this very short break.